Shalom, praise the Lord. I believe God has been with you the entire day and he has kept you well. And I give all the glory unto him. I praise him also. He has given me a wonderful day today and I bless his beautiful name. I come to you again live uh, to bring the word of God this evening unto you. And I believe that the Lord is going to minister to you. And he is going to turn your situation around. And bring a blessing this evening unto you. The one of God is power. Uh, the Bible says a man shall not live uh, by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So I want to believe as the word of God comes to you this evening, you're going to be blessed and uh, uh, you are going to see goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I believe uh, in the power of the word of God. Uh, let us pray and then hear the word of God. And we are going to be blessed. My name is Apostle Domiziano Mwenda of Life Equipping and Restoration Ministries, the King House, the King's House Moranga Sound. And I want to bless uh, the Lord for giving me this another chance to bring his word unto us. And I believe we are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity uh, to bring your word unto your people again this beautiful day, this beautiful evening that you have given unto us this wonderful Saturday. I pray that God, you are going to cause the light of your glory to shine upon your people and your blessings to come upon them this night like never before. I pray uh, in this watch of the night that you permit great things to happen. You permit blessings to happen uh, unto your people this night. I pray that those that have been shut over a, over a period of time shall be open. And God, you are going to release your favor unto your people. And we are going to bless them, O oh Lord. I set every captive free. Those who are bound by forces of darkness, I speak their liberty in the mighty name of Jesus. And I decree they are free. They are set free from the forces and powers of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord for setting your people free and bringing your blessings unto them. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. I want to bless the name of the Lord this wonderful evening uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for those who have already tuned in. Uh, you can invite your friends. You can share the message to your friends. And I believe we are going to be blessed uh, uh, this wonderful day in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to learn today how to overcome the power of unbelief. Unbelief is a spirit that hinders many people from reaching their destiny and shatters many greatness and causes many people uh, to live like weaklings when they have the potential to be great. Uh, unbelief has the ability to own the power of God and they shatter miraculous life that you don't experience miracles, you don't see the power of miracles in your life. So I want us to understand how, how can we overcome this power? How can we overcome this spirit of unbelief that we may uh, live the life uh, that God has uh, programmed for us as believers? How do we go about it? Because this is a sickness. I always tell people when I'm handling this topic, it's a sickness. You may suffer one time. If you're not sick now, you may be sick another day uh, because of the same problem. So I want us to understand it so that we can easily uh, 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 overcome it in a way that we may manifest 
and be great people that we are supposed to be. The Bible in the book of uh, Matthew 17, and I want to begin to read uh, uh, from verse uh, 14, uh, Matthew 17, verse 14. The Bible says, And when they and come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord of mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but I could not cure him. Note those ones. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear you? How, how long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. So, as surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will, not, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So it's Jesus talking to his disciples when they had come to him privately. And before then, in the same book, we see Jesus being transfigured in the Mount Transfiguration or the Mountain of Transfiguration. But when he comes down to meet the rest of the disciples, remember they were three. They were, they were four of them. At the mountain, there was James, there was John, there was Peter, and then there was Jesus. And when they come down to the mount uh, to, to meet the disciples after he was transfigured, then the man comes and falls before Jesus, and he says, "Help my boy." The boy has been epileptic, has been, and this demon torments him. It throws him into the waters. It throws him over into the fires. So I brought him to your disciples that I could cure him, but they did not. They were not able. So when immediately they he said that to Jesus, Jesus turns away from the man and direct to his disciples. And he says to his disciples, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Those are those ones used by Jesus. Faithless, then perverse generation. They say, how long will I stay with you? How long would I stay with you? How long would I be with you? So in other words, Jesus expected that would be a very easy job for his disciples. All the miracles that he had done, he was demonstrating to them what they are supposed to do. So he came to show them. 
He came to show them how they can rebuke demons, how they can heal the sick, how they can live a life of victory. That's what Jesus was demonstrating. So he was like frustrated. You can see him looking at the disciples and then calling them faithless and perverse. I don't know what he looks at you today, what he can call you. If you call the apostles faithless and perverse, the people who are staying with him, the people who are doing miracles, the people who had seen all this kind of wonders that he did. And he called them faithless and perverse. I don't know what he can call you today when he looks at you. When he looks at your faith. When he looks at your salvation. When he looks at your ministries. How many demons have ever come to you. How many men have come with problems and you have turned them away. How many women have come to seek for solutions because they are troubled and then you have sent them away. This man had brought a son to be cured by the disciples. But the disciples did not cure the son. The son was still sick, disturbed by the demon. So Jesus turns to his disciples and calls them faithless. So when you lack faith, the next thing you become is perverse. Perverse is moving away from your purpose. Moving away from your usefulness. In other words, you have been turned away from the correct purpose into the wrong purpose. You are serving a wrong purpose. You are doing what you were not created to do. Perverse. That means you have moved away from what you were wired to do. What you were designed to do. And you have gone into something else. I wonder how many people are still doing what they were ordained or wired by God to do. You can see, perverse, I can give you an example, is when you take your role, a trailer, and you make it a taxi. So you are daily waiting for people and you are parking your big trailer and you are saying, what are you doing? Tax business. It is when you turn that small car of yours, a polo box, into a lorry that you try, a lorry that tries to carry stones, building stones from the quarry. What do you do to that small car? damage it. When you are using your lorry for tax business, you are misusing it. So, it doesn't matter. You may be so big and doing small things, that is also perversion. You may be small and doing, trying to do great works that are supposed to be done by great things, perversion. So, when you are not into the right use, you are being perverted. And this is what de de degrades the value of men. So Jesus called them because they lacked faith. He called them perverse. And then they came to him, they asked, they wondered. They did not complain. When they were called perverse, they knew Jesus was right. Faithless, they knew Jesus was right. So they came and asked him, why could we not? Cast out this demon. Privately. When others are gone. The son has already been healed. And the man has left. Then they come to Jesus and they ask him. Why could we not cure him? And then Jesus said. Because of your unbelief. Look at that now. Because of your unbelief. So, unbelief meant them not to heal that son. They were not able to cast that demon out because of their unbelief. So, when you are operating under the power of the unbelief, devil is more powerful than you are. Devil is more powerful than you are. 
You cannot kick him out of the territory he has taken because of unbelief. So unbelief, number one, it weakens you, you as a believer. So when you allow the spirit of unbelief to come upon you, you become weak. It turns you into natural and even worse than the natural. And then you are not strong. Humbly deprives you your dominion. It takes away the power of your dominion. So you cannot have dominion. You cannot take charge. You cannot be in control. You cannot exercise your authority. Remember, authority comes from faith. When you believe, then you are given authority. Faith is what gives you authority. Remember the centurion who went to Jesus because of his servant, sent a message to Jesus because of his servant who was sick and he loved him. The Bible tells me when they were not far away from the house, see, the message was sent again by centurion to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, I do not need you in my roof. I want you just to speak a word and my servant shall be well. And when he said, speak the word and my servant shall be well, he reminded Jesus something. He told him, I am also a man of authority. I have soldiers who are under me. I tell one go, he goes. I tell one come, he comes. So I am a man of authority also. So speak a word and my servant shall be healed. And then Jesus listened to the man as he was speaking. I said, I have not seen this great faith even in Israel. So it is faith that makes you understand and exercise authority. So if you don't have faith, you cannot exercise authority. So you can be a powerless believer because you have allowed the spirit of unbelief to reign in your life. These disciples allowed it. That's why Jesus called them faithless and perverse. So the spirit of unbelief makes you live below your standards. I say the spirit of unbelief make you live below your standards. So if you cannot believe in the promises of God, you waver through unbelief regarding the promise. You cannot bring glory to God. You cannot bring glory to his name. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 4 from verse 17, that Abraham believed that he should become the father of many nations as it was promised by, by God to him. In God whom he believed, he was the father of many nations. God who caused things which do not exist as though they exist and God who gives life even to the dead. So, the Bible says he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God. But he was strengthened in faith. So he did not waver through unbelief. Abraham did not waver through unbelief. He was strengthened in faith. So unbelief would deny him a chance of becoming a father of many nations. But he chose to believe. So when you allow unbelief to come onto your heart, it denies you the chance to inherit the promises of God. The Bible says the promises of God are inherited through faith and patience. So when you become a, a man of faith and a woman of faith, that you are patient as matters, uh, as far as the promises of God are concerned, you are going to inherit those promises. You are going to see those promises coming to pass. But when you don't have that faith, 
When you don't have that faith and patience, you will just hear that the Lord said something, but it will never happen. So what it made Abraham to enjoy life is that he was strengthened in faith regarding the promise of God. Why? He was completely persuaded that the one who had promised and the power to fulfill the promise. So he did not waver through unbelief. So unbelief would have denied him that chance on becoming the father of many nations. I don't know how many things unbelief has denied you. Unbelief is so powerful that it can paralyze even the power of God and make the power of God not to be effective in the lives of people. Humbling is so strong that it can make the word of God not to have any effect in your life. Jesus complains in the book of Mark chapter 7 verse 13 and told the Pharisees they have annulled or they have made the word of God to lack power because of their unbelief, because of their tradition. So the word of God may be preached to you, but it may not have power because of unbelief. In the book of Matthew 13 and uh, verse 58, my Bible tells me, and he did not, he did not, uh, uh, and he did not uh, do mighty works there because of their unbelief. So Jesus did not do many mighty works in his, or in his hometown because of their unbelief. It is the unbelief that made him not to do miracles. The Bible says no mighty miracles happened there. The unbelief programs your thinking in a certain manner. And your perception moves in a certain direction. That is why you see there are some places where Jesus went and I saw him as a great prophet. And when I saw him as a great prophet, mighty miracles happened. And when they saw him like a mighty prophet, there were great mighty works that God did through him. But when he came to his hometown, they knew where he came from. That is why you hear they are wondering here. They say, is this not the son of the carpenter? Is not his mother Mary. Is not his father Joseph. And we know them. Is not their brothers even here. And they are with us and even the sisters. Where did he get this kind of, of, of knowledge from? They looked around. He did not attend their universities or their institutions of higher learning. They wondered how he could be having this kind of knowledge. Number two, he looked, they looked around. They saw the brother, they saw the sisters, and they thought, why could he be different? Why is he different from his sisters and his brothers? Said he could not be better than them. Where is he coming from? We know the father. How can he be better than the father? How can he be better than all other brothers? And we see them. How can he be better than the other family members? He's looking different. And now they found the, there must be something wrong with his knowledge. There must be something wrong with his power. And what happened after that? They rejected him. They rejected. And therefore, he could not do miracles. And these are the things that he said. And they were offended. That is what Matthew records in verse 57. They were offended in him. So, when you are walking under the, the, the spirit of unbelief, the promises of God do not delight you. They offend you. The works of God do not delight you. They offend you. So, when you become offended, you eat a God. He cannot work in your case. He cannot manifest his power that is able to deliver you from a situation. So a situation can be very small, but it can be big when you are operating under the spirit of unbelief. And we hear here 
Jesus talked to them and said, A prophet is not without honor, save his own country and his own house. So he says, it is where in his own house, the people who know you, how you have been transformed, how you have been changed. Sometimes they get it difficult to believe that God can use you. They get it difficult to believe that God can walk with you and manifest himself through your life because they know you. They understand you. The people that you schooled with, the people they saw you in the same classroom, you were playing with them. And they, they can't understand how, how you can be used. You used to be with them in the, the days of your youth and also when you are young. They wonder, how can this man, how can this woman be like this? Unbelief. Jesus said, if you have faith, a little as a mustard seed, mustard seed does not wait, something very light, you are able to tell this mountain, move and it shall move, and nothing shall be impossible with you. Nothing shall be impossible with you. So you can do all things when you understand that you carry power, you have authority in your hearts, you carry Jesus, you have the power to do mighty and great things. So when you begin to understand this, nothing shall be impossible with you. You will be able to perform great works. Nothing shall be impossible with you. But once you allow the the power of unbelief to have roots in your hearts. The only Jesus can do is to marvel. The Bible tells in the book of Mark uh, 6, verse 6, and this is one of, we can begin from verse 5. He could not do, he could not, uh, and he could there do no might work, say that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk. For and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the villages teaching. So Jesus could not do great works in his hometown. He could not do that. Apart from laying his hands on a few who got healed, laying his hands on a few who got healed, few because. His power was there. His anointing was there. His authority was with him. But the power of God that brings liberty, that brings change, that exalts people, could not flow from him to them because they were not able to connect. The power of unbelief hindered them from receiving the blessings of God. The power of unbelief stopped them from receiving. Remember, Jesus did not change. He is the same. He is the same. He went to places, did wonders, but because they believed. Sometimes you may be asking, why are these things not happening? Why is this situation not changing in my life? And you may be believing in God for that. But I want to tell you, if you allow the power of unbelief to sit on you, you will be hearing what happened and you will be just mocking even the power of God because you don't understand how these people can sing God, how these people can be blessed, how these people can be blessed and you are not getting blessed. You may wonder what really is happening. In the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 20, Paul tells us the reason why the children of Israel were cut off from the family of God is because of unbelief. So unbelief can make you to be divinely displaced. You move from your divine place. You move from the original purpose and the original plan of God. Because your heart, your heart did not believe in him. Your heart did not walk according to the will of God. The Bible says, 
There should not be anyone in our midst with our evil acts of unbelief, departing from the living God. That is Hebrews 3, 12. The heart of unbelief makes you depart from the living God. So you move away from the power of God. You move away from the God who is able to provide, God who is able to heal. God is able to do great things. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So the reason why they could not enter into the promised land according to Hebrews 3.19 is unbelief. They did not believe God. They doubted the power of God. They wavered through unbelief. And therefore they could not enter into the promise of God. I pray that you will not just be hearing things, but God will cause his promises to be fulfilled in your life and to be able to be enjoying what really the Lord has promised for you, that you shall not be perverted. I want you to understand there are three things, three things that when they are combined together, they form unbelief. So unbelief is a concussion or a combination of three things. And when they come to you, then the power of unbelief sits on you. Number one, one thing that makes unbelief or what is used to make something called unbelief is doubt. Doubt. So once you begin to operate in doubt and you allow doubt in your heart, then you are now invited. You are in the process of cooking what we call unbelief. So doubts, why do doubt come? Doubt comes when you fail to see the ability. You fail to see capability or possibility. Doubt comes when you fail to see the ability, capability, or possibility. So, for example, when someone you know, you are looking for 100,000, and someone you know cannot have money, I tell you, I will give you tomorrow. Because you see there is no ability, you doubt. You say, surely I doubt. Can you do that? I doubt. Why do you doubt? You doubt because you are not able to see the ability. The ability. When someone you know and tells you, tomorrow I am traveling to London, and you know this person has no ability, and you fail to see that ability, then you say, no, I doubt. So doubt comes because of your Failure, I say failure, to see ability. Failure to see ability. So once you fail to see ability, is this person able? Look how Abraham overcome. Abraham overcome because he was fully persuaded that the one who promised and the power to fulfill the promise he saw ability. He saw ability. Why has God done so mighty miracles? Creating even the world that we see, everything we see by the power of his word. He wants to demonstrate ability. When miracles are performed, miracle demonstrates ability. That's why Jesus was telling his disciples, if you cannot believe the ones, I was telling even the Pharisees, if you cannot believe the ones, the ones that I speak to you, believe in the works. So he has done miracles to demonstrate ability. Why was he so manned by the children of Israel? When they went and see the giants and they feared, they doubted that he would give them the land. And why was he so angry? It's because he demonstrated ability unto them by doing great things. 
He made the way in the sea to demonstrate the ability. He made the water comes out to come out of the rock to demonstrate ability. He turned the bitter water sweet to demonstrate ability. He fed them from the, uh, by manner from heaven to demonstrate ability. So once they failed to see that ability and doubted him, that is the time now God was very angry with them. Now, are you able to see ability of God? So what the devil does to block you and set you into the prison of unbelief, he makes you not to see the ability of God. The ability of God is not that he is not doing it. It's not that he is not demonstrating his power yet. Look at the people in the, in the, in, in, in the place where Jesus was born. They saw miracles. They saw wisdom. But they could not see the ability in him. They could not connect and understand where he came and got it from. They saw the roots. There are some things that program people. Experience, background, where you come from. The family, where you have been born. Environment that you have been brought up. Some people brought up in some environment of limitation. They don't believe that some things can happen. They don't believe that there are great things that can take place. They don't believe that changes can take place because they have not seen it. So many people believe in what they have ever seen. And what their mind can be able to comprehend. But when something goes beyond their knowledge, they doubt it and they begin to fight it because they are blinded in their minds. In the Bible, the book of Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17 tells us we should not walk like the Gentiles the way they walk. We should not no longer live like them. The Bible says in the fertility of their minds. In the fertility of their minds. They are darkened in their hearts and they are separated from the life of God because of unbelief that is deeply seated in them. The power of unbelief will shatter you from knowing what God is able to do. And you will not see ability of God. And when you don't see the ability of God, you doubt Him. When you don't see the ability, you doubt. And most of us, are in that position. Your mind cannot perceive how God can do things quickly. The soldier who was in the time of Elisha, when Elisha said, there shall be food in, being sold in the gate of Samaria uh, tomorrow at a time like now, and said even the price, the soldier said, even if God opens the window of heaven, can that, can that happen? So he failed to see the possibility of this happening. He failed to see the possibility. He failed to see possibility because the situation was bad. What did he do? He doubted the prophecy. And now the prophet said, you will see it, but you shall not eat. You shall not benefit. And it happened as the prophet said. How many times God has spoken to you and you have failed to see the ability of God? How many times have God spoken to, has God spoken to you and you have failed to see capability or a possibility? This is what brings doubt. You are told something, but you doubt because you don't see. I remember uh, there is a man, sometimes that is why I like saying this, when, when the word comes and you see there is no possibility in human standard and then believe God can do it and God does it, then you know it is God who has done it. Sometimes I don't like talking to your life when things look good. I like talking to people when it looks practically impossible that they cannot move in. And they cannot move out of that situation. So when I, I declare the word of God and it happens, then you will know there was God in heaven. Who did it? So there is a man and he used to be rich. And they used to be rich and a member of the church. And when he became so rich, he was perverted. And he left the way of God. He married a second wife. He did most things that was against faith. And therefore, and still he was in the name of preaching and name of doing something. But he became rich. He became a broker. Even in the church, he could buy a piece of land knowing the church would buy the following time. And then he would sell to the church, double the church where he is a member. And things were not good. I never knew him so well. 
when I was in that town, I was new, I never knew him so well, but I had the name. But one day I had a privilege. His daughter from the second wife was brought to me sick. She had gone to hospitals and they, she could not recover. So uh, the only thing left was prayer. So she was brought to me and I prayed to her. And when I prayed to her, she got healed and she went home. Everything was okay. But she was left crying at night at particular hours. She could wake at a certain hour and then begin to cry at that hour. And when she cried at that hour, she could not keep quiet until a certain hour. So there was a pattern of her crying. Then now, she was brought back to us again, saying, now all other sicknesses went away, but she was only left crying. So I got old. She was about nine months or so. I got hold of the, uh, the little baby, and then I started to ask God, what could be the problem? What could be the problem? She was healed from other problems, and you don't do uh, work halfway. Because uh, when you set free, you set free indeed. What is the problem? God told me she is not sick. She is only sensitive in the spirit. And that is the time powers of darkness are invading the family. And the father and mother, they used to be protected. Now there is no protection. Another child is sensing the presence of evil. And within a very short time, what they enjoy and the celebration will be taken away from them. They will not have anything to celebrate after this. And then uh, I, 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 I felt like I have not earned. But my wife was outside washing and then she came in because we understand for quite some time to finish what she was doing to join us. When it was in my house, when the, the, the child was brought, she was brought in my house. Now what happened? I asked my wife, have you understood what is the problem of the child? My wife said, yes. She is sensing the presence of powers of darkness. She said exactly what I had felt and I did not share with her. I handed it to me. I did not open my mouth to talk to anyone. So she confirmed it. I told her, you are now right. Then I told the lady who brought the, the child, go and tell the mother, it's the mother we need. Or the father, we don't need you. We cannot explain to you this. And the lady came. She was rich at that time. You know how the rich people who, who are proud, how they behave. She came and she wondered. It is a problem of the child that harbored her. That is why she was able to come to, to my house. Otherwise, she could not come. Now, when she came, we were very able. We were living in a single room at that time. A double room. Eh? Uh, one room was a, a, a sitting room. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, the, and the next room was kitchen and bedroom. So we, we were living in that kind of a situation. Two rooms. And now uh, the, 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 the lady came. And when she came, you now she came from a rich background. They have cars. They have everything. We don't have even a bicycle or a toy around. So we are like that. Men of God with the word of God. Just like that. We had married. We were just a few months. We were not even yet one year in marriage. Just a few months in our marriage. I'm talking about now almost 17 years ago. Now, what had really happened? The man, the, the, the woman came, I told her, listen to me. Now the word came very clearly. I told her what has happened in her life, what has happened in that family, and they have no spiritual protection. And now whatever they have will be taken by forces of darkness. And I told them, go and tell your husband, you need to repent and go back to God and become serious. Otherwise, if you don't repent and come back to God, when before the end of this year, you will have nothing. Everything you have will be been taken. You will be very poor. Then the lady looked at me. They have shops. They have floors. They have cars. And it was November, I remember very clearly, November 20, 2003, it was November. So we are going to this, uh, 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 from, I mean it was September, it was September, sorry. It was September, now we are going to October, 
then November, then December. And they are told before the end of this year, everything will be over. It's looked practically impossible because of what they, they are under that time. It looked practically impossible. So maybe the woman loved in her heart. Maybe the man loved in his heart when he had the message. That's not a fake prophet. Nothing can happen. Let me tell you, by November, I received, I think it was either second or third week of November, before we entered December, a man visited me. And he was a businessman in that town. He told me, we are shocked. So, why? So and so, Flani, aliniambia hivyo kukusaile, Flani, amefilisika. Say, wow, and I, what? I told him. Say, you told him? He said, yeah. yes, I told him. Say, you are blessed. Say, why? Because, you told him. Many preachers, do not tell the rich men their problems. If you told him, and you told him his sin, and you told him to repent, then you are blessed. I said, Amen. So he said, How do you know this? Because it's something that looks shocking. Say, I know. He started giving me the story. To cut a long story short, the second week of December, we met with a man. He had been left with one car at that time. A lorry, small one. A lorry, a small lorry. And he had the privilege to carry me with that small lorry from a short distance. Then he told me, man of God, I had the message and I will come. Let me tell you, before January, he was living in a room, a small room. A house built of timber. There is no floor. There is, there is no cement. Third floor. It was earthen floor. Zero. It was something that looked like it cannot happen at all. But it happened. I have seen some things when people cannot accommodate them in their hands. But it happens. So, your failure to see the possibility... You are failure to see ability or capability does not mean that God is not able or things will not happen. Why was centurion servant? Why was centurion himself? Why was he uh, blooded by Jesus, a man of great faith? It's because he saw possibility. He said, speak the word. Speak the word. And my servant shall recover. He was able to see that God is able to speak and command things to happen. Seeing the ability. So what the devil does is blinding you that you don't see the ability. You don't see the ability. Most of the time when we read the word of God, the Bible says the word of the God brings uh, entrance of light into the symbol. We are able to understand. But when you are not able to understand, then you don't see capability. You don't see possibility. You don't see ability. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of things that we don't see. And faith is built on two things. Ability to believe the power of God and ability to see him being true to his promise. That is why we see this combination in Sarah and Abraham. Sarah, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11.11, 11, even Sarah herself received power by faith to conceive a physical child. And she was able to bear a child well, she was long past the age for it because she considered him who and promised to be true, to be true to his word. He considered, she considered the one who can promise to be true to his word. So when you consider God to be true to his word, when you see him trustworthy, 
That's it. That means you are seeing a capability and possibility. You are able to see it. So when the devil blinds you, you are not able to see what God is able to do. You will rate him in the standard of man. You rate him in the standard of what you have known there before. But I want to tell you, once your eyes open and see possibility of God, you open yourself to the world of wonders. Those who know they are gone, they shall do, they shall be great and they shall do exploits. So when you begin to understand the ability of God and see the probability, the capability and possibilities of what he has promised you, you overcome doubts. And that when you don't see ability, capability, or possibility, you will invite doubts. And once you invite doubts, then the unbelief is on the way coming to you. Doubt itself alone is not unbelief. But it's what makes, it's one of the things that makes unbelief. How many things are you doubting? How many things you hear from God even in the church and you don't feel like it's connecting? You are trying to connect it with your understanding, you don't see their possibility. You are trying to see yourself convinced, but you are not seeing yourself convinced. Because you doubt it. You doubt if really God loves you that way. You doubt if God can really use you. You doubt even if God really can change that situation. You doubt it. You doubt it because you don't see the ability and you don't see the capability or possibility. This is what I like to say. When the ability of God is revealed to you, you will not be limited in any area of your life. When you are able to sense what he is able to do, then you will not look at time because God is not controlled by time. You will not look at the situation because God does not look at the situation before he blesses you. God has the power to do anything at any time. He has the power to do anything at any hour. It does not require years to bless you. It does not require 10 years, 20 years. He is able to do it within a short time. And people may marvel, may they wonder. You may be surprised by what God is doing. But God is never surprised by what a man does. I want you to understand. He has the power. He has the ability. That's why the Bible says, uh, it may be earned for human beings, but it is easy for God. It is easy for God. And all things are possible to him who believes. So when you see the ability, you see the capability and possibility, then you have overcome the doubts. Then another thing that I want you to get here, what makes again, makes again unbelief is fear. So we are saying doubt, number one. Number two, fear. Fear. What, what causes fear? What causes fear in your life? Fear is caused by your own personal weaknesses. Personal weaknesses may cause fear. You may be have a weakness. May have a weakness. That is personal inabilities. When you are faced with something that you feel you have no ability to handle it, you have a weakness, you are afraid. Fear comes. When I tell you, drive me and you don't know how to drive, take me to this place, you fear. Because you doubt yourself. When I ask you this, you fear. When you doubt, you doubt yourself. You are not seeing the ability. Yeah, uh, or you are seeing the personal weaknesses. So it deprives you of your confidence. The Bible says, do not cast away your confidence. Do not cast away you are confidence, not our confidence. You are confidence. There is a confidence that is associated with you. You are confidence. Do not cast away your confidence because it carries the great reward of recompense. So that confidence that you have, when fear comes, that confidence is shattered. The Bible says when you shrink back, you are destroyed. 
When you shrink back, you are destroyed. So fear comes and takes away that confidence. So when that confidence is not there, then you miss your reward. Because fear takes it away. Fear causes you to fail to express yourself. Fear causes you to fail to express yourself. So you can't express yourself. And now, once you allow fear to come in, you enter into the life of oppression. In the book of Isaiah, God says, oppression will not come to you because you will not fear. So it means once you fear, oppression comes. Something that you can easily defeat can put you into fear and fear makes you forget your strength. Fear makes you forget even what you have. Fear makes you not think right or think straight. When Goliath brought fear in the camp of the children of Israel, they forgot the covenant. They forgot they are God who fights for them. So they are afraid. They are afraid and therefore they shook and they melted. And this man was doing it continuously every day. Speaking once, that brought fear. So there are some ones that you are told, some experiences that brings fear. You are told once or you go through some experiences. Some people, you did something, you failed, you fear. You entered into a relationship, failed. You entered another one, failed. Then you are programmed to fear. You have seen a sickness has killed your mother, has killed your sister, has killed your brother. And now you program yourself, you are going to die in the same sickness. So you are put into that program of fearing even something that is not there. But the program of your mind tells you it is there. So you are afraid that it will get to you. There are some people who are afraid because they have seen cancer kill some people in their family. They are afraid and they are walking with that. They don't have confidence. They are afraid that they will also die of the same. You have family lineage. Some people, uh, they have bro broken families. Families are not happy. You are afraid that your family also will become like that. So many are afraid of many things that are happening or have befallen their members of the family. Fear has come. So fear comes also through what you see and what you hear. Like now what the media has done and what the world has been afraid of are uh, more than even COVID-19 itself is fear. Because you're told when you get this sickness, you die. And we have seen people recover. And we have seen those who have died, even most of them have not died because of COVID-19. They have died because of other health complications. And now because of what the strategy that is coming, even now, every day the government is telling you how many people have gotten the corona virus, the COVID-19, every day. And how many have died and how many have recovered? They are not telling you how many people have cancer every day, how many have died of cancer that day, how many have died of HIV, how many have HIV, how many got HIV over 24, last 24 hours, we don't know. But now because that is the focus, everybody now is so much afraid. And in the beginning, it was a lot of fear. Now, at least, some people are not fearing. Uh, the fear has gone. As long as you know, I am observing what I am being told by the Minister of Health, I, I, I am safe. But before, most of the people were running away. Because uh, running away even from something that they don't understand. Fear. There are so many people who are running away from things they don't understand. Fear. So, boldness is to the person who belongs to to the family of faith. That's why Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good courage. So courage is needed. 
So where fear is, there's no courage. And where courage is, there's no fear. So it's courage that will lift you up. It's courage that will give you what you want. So once you allow fear to begin to reign in your heart, then unbelief is on your way coming. So fear is brought also by day-to-day -day challenges. So when you face a challenge, you're afraid. When you look at what the threats of tomorrow or the challenges of tomorrow, you are also afraid. So fear comes into our heart because you are saying, maybe I will not be able to do this. Maybe I will not do this. Maybe things will be worse than it is. And fear, fear comes and beclowns even your thinking. And when you are beclowned in, the thing, in your thinking because of fear, then you lose everything, the confidence that you are supposed to have, which carries great reward. You look, you fail to see the ability and the power of God because of the spirit of fear. Fear is bad. It causes you to fail to reach where you are supposed to reach in life. And you fear even things which are not there. And number three, what causes unbelief is confusion. Confusion. Confusion is caused by uncertainty. That means you are not sure if what you want will happen. Then you are confused. Remember the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. So con when confusion comes, you don't know the step to take. You don't know if what you are about to do is right or wrong. You, don't, you are not sure if you are from God or you are from yourself. When you are not sure like that now, that failure to be certain, you are not certain that this is this. You are not sure this is the right way. You are confused. So confusion is caused by that. So once you are not able to see what God is seeing, once you begin now to waver through the faith, or out of the faith through unbelief, then you are perverted. And when you are perverted, you live a life of struggle instead of a life of winning. Now, I want you to understand, when you see these three things, they have come to you. You are afraid. Fear has come. Doubt has come. Confusion has come. You are already operating under the spirit of unbelief. And the spirit of unbelief, when it comes into your life, you will begin to struggle in life. You will fail to do things that you could easily do. I want you to understand, some people are afraid that the promises that God gave them will not come to pass. Some people are afraid that they may fail to succeed the way God wanted them to succeed. But let me tell you this, this does not add any value to your life. In the it brings you down. I want you to understand this. The same father or the same boy that we have discussed in the book of Matthew chapter 17, Jesus asked him, do you believe I can do this? Then he said, yes. And if I don't believe, help me in my unbelief. I want you to tell you, I want to tell you that you cannot do anything about your unbelief. Not unless God helps you in your unbelief. Unbelief will destroy your life. Unbelief is so powerful that it requires God's intervention for us to overcome it. Once you meet yourself, you are in doubt, you are afraid, and you are confused. You need the hand of God to deliver you from that. That's why this man was wise and said, I am believe, but help me 
in my unbelief. So it is only God who has the power to help us in our unbelief. And we need to come to him and also settle to him. And we become free because he is in charge and he is in control of everything. That is the only way we are able to overcome unbelief. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need to know that. So he is the one who starts and finishes your faith. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. So when you are afraid, run to Jesus. When you feel you are doubting, sink to him. When you feel confused, run to him. And when you go to him and tell him, I feel I am afraid and I have come to you, take away this fear. I feel like I am confused, I cannot think right, take away confusion. I feel like I doubt, take away these doubts away from me. I want to tell you that is the way to overcome and that is the way to become victorious over this work. So when you are struggling with the unbelief, the promises of God bring sorrow in a stain of joy. You are not happy. You are not happy at all. You are not happy. You are not happy. When the word comes and gives you a possibility that this will happen, you are not happy. Because you are struggling with unbelief. So I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that God does not need your effort to bless you. Some of us think we are blessed because of our efforts. But I want to correct you and understand today, it is not our efforts that makes us to be blessed. I don't say you become lazy. The Bible tells us when he took them to the promised land and he gave them this one before even they entered. He told them their, their feather, their, 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 their cattle, uh, they are they are, they are, they are, they are and gold, they are silver, and everything will be multiplied. And then say, you shall not say it is by your strength, because you have gotten that. You shall not say it is by your effort, but you shall remember God. For he is he who gives you power to get wealth. So it is not our effort that brings us to that place of glory. It is God's power. And we are to remember him and give him glory for where we are at every time. So it is not our efforts. So some people are getting confused, getting those kind of hindrances in their life because they think it is by their efforts. It is by the grace of God. It is by the help of God that you are able to attain to your goals, that you are able to reach where you want to reach. Now, God is not blessing you because of your efforts. He is blessing you because of his grace. It is by his grace that he releases the blessing upon your life. So don't say that I am so unworking. I am so this. That is why I am blessed. No. It is because of God's grace. Don't see unwork. See grace. Don't see your wisdom. See the power of God. And that is the time. You are going to be blessed. God want, do not want us to see our efforts as a way of earning blessings. So do effort. But don't think the effort is the way of earning blessings. Do it. But don't think this is the way of earning blessings. It's not. And if you consider doing that, God will let you do things in your own way. So it is not your efforts. So some people think even it's because of the way you pray. I know a certain man of God who gave us a testimony. He waited for God to bless him and do something in the ministry, to give him the land for the ministry. And he saw he wanted that land like yesterday. Every year he was saying, the first year he said God is going to be this. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the seventh year, see the perfect number of God. The eighth year is the year of new beginning. Ninth year is the, the year of fruits. I'm going to be fruitful. Oh, tenth year he said the number, complete number of God. I am having the land. And then he waited, nothing happened. So the eleventh year, nothing has happened. Now what happened? 
He went to God. Saying, God, there must, there must be something very wrong. Whether with you or me. Somebody here must be very wrong. And then God told him, there is something wrong seriously with you. Say, what? I believe in you. I confess all this. What is this? Then God told him, you are not believing. You are afraid that I will not give you the land. You are afraid. And then he said, I will give you the land. What you need it to believe. That means God taught him about the unbelief. And then he took it. And then believed that God will do it. He waited the second year from that day. That year, nothing happened. The following year, nothing happened. He went for a meeting and he met a preacher was preaching. And then he sowed a seed. And then he went for prayer to be prayed for the land. And then God allowed him to finish the prayer and even the seed and everything. Then he called him again and asked him, what was that prayer for? What was that prayer for? What was that for? Then he said, I, I was giving to give you that. I said, you don't believe. You don't believe I will give you the land. You are afraid still. That means unbelief is still working. So the man regretted having done that, but says, okay. He said, I will wait for you now. See, that's all. And from that day, immediately, when he hears fear coming to his heart, he was telling God, God, somebody is knocking at my door and I don't want him. Fear. Kick him. Deal with him. Whenever I felt something like doubt, God, kick it out of my life. And the time he was being given the land, even he was far away, he was out of the country. And the land was given in a style that he could not believe. Even that time he had no money. He had not prepared to buy. But he bought the land. And he bought another. And he bought another. And he bought another. He started building a city within a city. Why? He overcame unbelief. I believe the big problem most of us have is unbelief. There is a bigger problem than lack of money. Lack of faith. That is the biggest problem we have. Lack of faith. Some years back, God told me, you don't need money to serve me. You need faith. And that is the day I was liberated. I could not raise that thousand shillings. I wanted to give it to the ministry. Nothing in my house, even if I sold everything, it could not total that thousand. And I cried bitterly. Then God said, son, you need faith. And from that day, I woke up from that dream of darkness. Even now, I never need money to do things. I need faith. I have done so many things without money. Money comes when I have decided. And one will say, when you believe in God and you put away the barriers you have kept in your heart, God is going to do wonders within your life. What God wants you to do is to step out, move out, and let him begin to do wonders in your life. Step out of the way and you will see wonders. But as long as you are seeing your effort, as long as you are seeing your commitment, God is not in. He will not bless you because of your efforts. He will bless you because of his grace. He wants you to be obedient. You have to step out and open your ears to his instructions and follow the instructions of God. Obey his voice. That is what he has called you to do. Obey his voice. If you diligently hearken unto my voice and to do everything, all the ordinances and everything I have commanded you, I will lift you above the nations of the world. I will lift you above the nations of the world. God, if you will obey, diligently follow him, diligently obey his voice, God himself will lift you up above the nations of the world. And the, these blessings shall follow you and they shall overtake you. That's what God says. Obeying his voice. So God wants you to come to the place of complete obedience. 
where you can hear his voice and do what he wants you to do. As you come to that level of complete obedience, I want to tell you, you will begin to see wonders in your life. You will begin to see miracles of God. You will be see a great happenings of God in your life because you obey his voice. God has called us to believe him and to obey him. That is all. Let every action that you are doing be prompted by your faith in obedience to the word of God. As you obey the word of God and you follow the instructions of the Lord, then you will get yourself into the place of the supernatural. But as long as you are seeing your efforts, time will come you will be in doubt. Time will come the experience that you go through. That is why some people, even the way you are talking before is not the way you talk now. Some people, the way you are preaching before is not the way you preach now. Because experience has taught you. And I'm not saying you have improved. Some of us are afraid to face things and declare things that they were declaring before. Because now faith has gone down because experience has taught you. And you have seen what has happened over a long period of time. And now you are afraid. As far as you continue moving in the work of God in faith, you are moving away from the life of faith into the natural life. That is how people become religious. You continue slowly by slowly losing that fire of God, losing the instructions of God, losing that voice of God. Some of us are not straining to hear God. They are following experience. And you are doing things according to experience, not according to the voice of God. And that's where you are now meeting yourself tied and you cannot move out. I pray this night that God will deliver you from the power of unbelief. That you will come out of doubts. You will come out of confusion and fear. Because these are the three things that makes you doubt or forms doubts. That you will step out of the way and allow God to do what only he can do. He has the power to take you to every place you need. What you need is to be fully persuaded that he has the power to do. What you need is to be sure and to believe that he is true to his word. When he said it, he meant it. When he said it, he meant it. And when you take him as true, you will do it. God and to wait before he blessed Sarah and Abraham. He had to wait until Sarah get her own faith. Father did not, uh, Sarah did not ride on the faith of Abraham. Otherwise, the Bible would not have recognized her faith and she would not be written in the book of faith. She was written in the book of faith because she also believed. The Bible says, Sarah also herself. Herself. Sarah also herself. Received the power by faith to conceive physically. And she and ability to bear a son. Though she was long past the age. Because she considered him who and promised to be true to his word. So God had waited for Sarah to develop her own faith. And that is time. Remember by that time. They all had problems. By, by the time Abraham gave Sarah, uh, uh, I mean Sarah gave Abraham uh, uh, Adam to test her that if he can become a father and he saw he is a father. So the burden shifted and went in the sign of Sarah. Sarah herself also. And to rise up from unbelief and believe God has power. I want you to rise from the place of your unbelief 
and believe that God has power to do what he has promised. May God deliver you from the spirit of unbelief. May you begin to see possibilities and ability of God. May you begin to see the power of God in your life. May you begin to see God using you more than ever before. May you start to see yourself rising to the higher levels more than before. Begin to see this situation coming to an end and your ministry expanding more than before. Begin to see yourself taking the cities and taking the world for God. God, and begin to see your business resurrecting and coming forth. Don't see yourself dead in this time of COVID-19. I pray that God shall deliver you from the spirit of an unbelief. I pray that unbelief will not be making you perverse and making you a generation that is faithless anymore. You shall begin to walk by faith. You shall begin to walk by the power of God. I declare by the word Word of God that I am preaching now, that God shall break the yokes and set you free from the bondage of unbelief, and the spirit of the mighty God shall rise upon you and release the power of faith where you are. That courage will come unto you. No doubts, no confusion in your life. You don't belong to the generation of confused people. You belong to a generation that is blessed. I declare the power of the word of God upon you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord God lift you from wherever you are. Take away all your fears. Take away all your, your worries. He is your refuge. He is your stronghold. And and when you run to him, you are secure. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are delivered from the power of unbelief. Whatever has been hindering God's miracles in your life, let it die today. Let God deal with it today. Let God deal it today. Whatever has been limiting your ministry, whatever has been limiting your life, oh, may God deal with it this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare liberty over your life. I declare liberty over your mind. Whatever fear has come over you, I kick it out in the name of Jesus. What Whatever spirit that has been limited, your operations, I declare it is hereby destroyed by the power of the word of God in Jesus' mighty name. May your eyes open to see the power of God. May your eyes open to see that God is true. God is faithful to his word. His promises are yes and amen. May the power of the Lord visit you where you are now. I decree in the name of Jesus, whatever has be making you afraid. Whatever news uh, that uh, you have received that uh, they have made you afraid, uh, I knock them out of your mind. Whatever program, whatever you have seen in your family, in your village, in your town, the people that have died in your lineage, they have died of cancer, they have died of diabetes, and you think you are on the line, I declare in the name of Jesus, there shall be a, another fresh program for you. You shall not incline your mind on the negative. You shall incline your mind on the positive and you shall see God of possibility. God who is able to make a way where there is no way. God is able to heal all kind of sickness. God is able to deliver all kind of captives. He has the power. He has the power to change your situation. May he arise now and begin to change your story. I say may your story be changed. May your story be made new. May the name of Jesus. May you overcome the spirit and the power of unbelief. From today, you shall be known as a person of faith. You shall not be afraid. You shall not be afraid. You shall not fear anything in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for everyone who has heard this message and those who will hear this message. Because the spirit of unbelief that limits the power that you have released to help your people in their lives will never work for them. Every form of doubts, every form of fear, every form of confusion, 
I destroy you in the name of Jesus. For I pray that these people will not be afraid. I pray that they will not be confused. I pray they shall not doubt. They will see ability. They will see possibilities and capabilities. Your hand is raised upon them. And you shall scatter every force of darkness contrary to their life. Install a fresh program. The program that will make them walk in boldness. The Bible tells me the righteous are are, bold, are, are as bold as a lion. I pray that they shall be of good courage. They shall be of good courage. And they shall not fear anything. They shall not fear the situation they are now or the situation they will face. Your blessings will rest upon them. Bless them and do them good. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. I want to believe that the Lord has done you well. And has blessed you. You shall not be afraid. You shall not fear. Don't allow unbelief to turn you into a perverse generation or a perverse person. Arise in your place. Arise in the place of power. Arise in the place of your strength. God is able to perform His word. He does not need your effort to do His word. He needs you to believe Him and obey Him. When you believe Him and obey Him, He has His own way of doing things. Trust Him with all your hearts. And when you do that, you will live in peace. The Lord will do many things for you. And he will make his name be glorified through your life. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Tomorrow we are meeting for our online services uh, from the King's House, Muranga Town, here in Kenya, East Africa. Uh, from 7 East African time, 7 a.m. We shall be beginning streaming live our first service. Then our second service beginning from 9.30 East Africa time. We shall be streaming it live to you. And the other one from 12.30 uh, p.m. That is East African time. Uh, be there. Join with us. And God is going to bless you and do you great works. Don't fail to uh, uh, visit my YouTube uh, channel, subscribe, see more messages that I have preached, and God is going to bless you. Don't fail to meet us also here with my wife for the Divine Marriage Program beginning Monday from 9 p.m. Be there, and God is going to bless you and do you good. My name is Apostle Domiziano Mwenda of Life Equipping and Restoration Ministry. The King's House Muranga saying, God bless you. Have a wonderful night and don't be afraid. Amen.